Hey guys, Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am finally doing my best in beauty for 2019. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss any of my future videos and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss an upload. All right, let's get into it. I have been majorly slacking on filming this video. I meant to film it last week. My entire new year, I feel like, has gotten off to the weirdest start. I expected to be like way more ahead of the game than I feel like I am. But that's life. We're here now. We're going to talk about everything. Um, I've got to say, when I sat down to start pulling products, I felt like I wasn't going to have anything because I just have been wearing a lot of the same makeup this year. But I do have quite a few products that are new to me this year and some really good ones that I absolutely love. As soon as I opened my everyday makeup drawer, I was like, oh yeah, all of these are things I haven't mentioned like from last year or beyond that. Um, everything in here though, you have heard me talk about at some point or another. So there's nothing like crazy new here. This is just kind of my roundup of things that I absolutely love that I think are actually worth your money. And yeah, let's do this. Before I get into the products, I just have to mention one little thing. I just started a seasonal subscription box for With Love Sarah. If you're not familiar, With Love Sarah is my jewelry line. Both of these pieces are from there, as well as my ring. And actually, my Starburst medallion is the most popular item I think I've ever had on the site. And this is on its last restock right now. So it is on the site. It's available but once it's sold out, it's gone forever. And then the disc necklace is still available and I actually have more coming next week. And the chain ring is also on its last restock. So those are kind of some pieces. If you're interested in them, grab them. I will link all of them down below. And then the seasonal subscription box is a exclusive box that you can only get the pieces if you're signed up for the subscription. So they will not be on the website. They're not going to be anywhere else for purchase. The only way that you can get these pieces are if you're signed up for the box. So it is $44 every three months. So it's not a monthly expense. It's a quarterly expense and you will receive two to three pieces. Like I said, exclusive. You do fill out a preference form just so that I kind of know what your preferences are so that I'm able to tailor the box to a point for your preferences. Obviously it's not going to be like completely custom to each individual, but I will have some options. So hopefully you'll get pieces that you absolutely love and get tons and tons of use out of. I am beyond excited about it. I already have this stuff designed for the February box and it's good. So if you're interested in that, I will leave the link down below to sign up for it. You have until February 3rd to sign up if you want to be included in the February box. Otherwise, the next box will go out next quarter. So yes, that is my exciting announcement. If you watched my goals for the year, I mentioned it in that video that it was a goal of mine to start this. It is finally up on the website. You can sign up for it. Link down below. I do have some random beauty products and then I also have makeup that I'm going to talk about and I'm just not going to go in any specific order. I'm just going to go in whatever I pick up because I don't feel like it. Everything I mentioned today will be listed down below in the bottom bar for you in case you're looking for it. The first product is from Urban Decay. This is the Stay Naked The Fix powder. I have this in the shade 40NN. This is a more recent launch. I want to say it came out a couple of months ago. And I have been loving it. I've been using it every single day since I got it. And I'm actually like kind of into pressed powders lately instead of the loose powders. It's just so much easier and less messy. Uh, but this is what it looks like. This is the shade 40NN. It does come with the nice sized mirror and then also with this sponge that I will never use. The powder itself though is so beautiful. That's what I'm wearing today. It really blurs out your skin, sets your makeup, but doesn't give you that like matte dry or cakey or like cracked finish. It gives you just a really nice skin like finish. Can't say enough good things about this. I absolutely love it. And the shade 40 NN is a really, really good match for me. Next is from Milk. This is the Hydro Grip Primer. I seriously love this. I feel like so many people were talking about it when it launched and then it just like disappeared off the face of the planet. And I do not know why because it is seriously good. 
So I have used quite a bit of mine up, but I do still have a bit left. So it is a hydrating primer, but it's sticky, so it will hold all of your makeup on. Basically what you do is you take a pump, um, put it onto your face, and then wait one minute and kind of let it set almost, except it doesn't set. It'll still feel tacky to the touch, but after you put the rest of your makeup on, you can't feel it. So that doesn't bother me. If that bothers you, steer clear. Uh, but I think that for most people, unless you're just wearing just this, which I'm not sure why you would do that, but if you didn't have anything else over it, it probably would leave your skin tacky and that just is not a good feeling. But once you put anything like a BB cream or a foundation, powder, bronzer, blush, whatever that is, your face would just take on that finish. I am shocked about how much I love this bronzer. This is from Marc Jacobs. It is the Omega Bronze in Tantastic. And everything I heard about this, so I want to say this was like limited edition and then they took it away and then they brought it back and now it's in their permanent line. And everyone talked about how it had a coconut scent. It even says coconut perfect tan. I hate coconut like hate coconut the butter bronzer from physicians formula i cannot use it it is the most beautiful bronzer and i can still smell it once it's on my face everyone says that that scent dissipates i do not believe that it dissipates it stays on my skin and i can smell it and it drives me nuts that i actually decluttered it this does not smell half as bad it actually doesn't bother me at all like, I guess if you really stick your nose in there, you can smell a hint of coconut, but it is not one of those things that when you're applying it, you can smell it. I can't smell it when it's on my skin. So if you're sensitive to coconut, you can still give this a try. But this is pricey. It has a really big size mirror, and the pan is huge. This pan has so much more product than my other bronzers that it is worth the price tag. It's actually cheaper per ounce than almost any other bronzer that I have, just because it is so large. Just for reference, I pulled out my Hourglass bronzer. I love this bronzer, and this is 0.39 ounces, and this one is 0.8 ounces. So it's more than double the size of my Hourglass bronzer. So just for reference, it is gigantic, so I feel like that justifies the price. Also, I would mention my Hourglass bronzer, but I mentioned it last year. It's a favorite. It's still a favorite. Absolutely love it, but I'm trying to mention as few things that I mentioned last year as possible, although I'm sure there's going to be a couple. This blush formula from Buxom is outstanding. This is the Wanderlust Primer Infused Blush, and I have it in the shade Dolly. What I will say is this is a very pigmented blush, so you have to use a really, really light hand. It is gorgeous, though. I just cannot get enough of it. I wear it. It's one of my go-tos. It's in my everyday makeup drawer. I just can't get enough of it, and I love that you can just use a little bit of it because this is going to last for a really, really long time. The colors are gorgeous in the line, and this stays all day. I just have nothing but amazing things to say about this, so if you haven't, either gone in store and swatched it or tried it out yourself, I highly recommend trying it. I guess I'm gonna try to be somewhat organized. So I do have one more powder and one more blush. I'll talk about those now. The Becca blush in Songbird. This is no surprise if you've been following me for a while. This is what I have on my cheeks today. This again stays all day. It is a pretty pigmented, so you do need to be a little bit careful with it. I love the packaging. It has this little mirror that I never use, um, but the packaging is really cute and sturdy. I just absolutely love this formula as well. I wear this almost every single day. I still haven't hit pan, which I do not know how, but it is so good. And then the other powder is from Benefit. This is the Hello Happy in the shade four. This is new this year. I think it was, I'm 90% sure it was launched this year, but I have hit major pan. I use this so often. Before I got the Urban Decay, I was using this every single day since I had gotten it. And this, again, has a little brush and a sponge that will never be used, but the actual powder is just so good. Again, blurs, sets your face. This also does come in a few different color options. It's just beautiful and doesn't leave your skin cakey. I feel like so many of the powders that I've tried just make my skin look so dead, and I don't want that. I just want my makeup to be set, but still have like a nice, lifelike finish. I have two foundations to talk about. The first one is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. This one is in the shade Santa Fe, 
and I actually as soon as I ran out of this one went out and bought a new one which is pretty rare for me just because I do have a pretty extensive makeup collection so it's not often that I will run out of something and feel like I need to have it right away this was one of those things. I think it's totally worth the money. It gives you a medium but buildable coverage. It has a really skin-like finish. I just think that the coverage is absolutely beautiful. It's not one of those things that's going to be like a mask. You can still see some of your skin peeking through depending on how much you build it up, but I just love it. The other foundation I want to talk about is from Laura Mercier. This is the Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. Why do all of these foundations have to have the longest names on earth? But this is in 2N1 Cashew. <sighs> this is what I have on my skin today. I just, this is good. So it's again a medium buildable coverage. I would say it has slightly less coverage than the NARS one, but not by much. You can build it up. Um, you can see, just like the NARS one, you can probably see some of my acne scars on my skin still, which is fine with me. I, I'm at a point now, for so long I wanted to cover up every single thing on my face. I'm at a point now that I'm okay with my skin peeking through a little bit, although I do want most of it to be covered up. But this does do the trick and it is buildable. Again, this has a really nice skin-like finish. Both of these are just phenomenal, phenomenal um, foundations. They wear for a really long time, so you don't have to worry about them throughout the day if you're going to work or you're going out, whatever that is. These will just last for you and look just as good after hours and hours. I can't believe I waited until 2019 to buy the Shiseido Eyelash Curler. I have no idea what I was doing with my life, but I was doing it wrong. This eyelash curler is so good. It's $20, so it's a little bit more expensive than, you know, a drugstore one. Although I've gone through, I've bought a couple from like Revlon, and I want to say those were like $12 or $13. So it's not that much less expensive. Plus, if you wait for one of the Sephora sales, you can usually get it included in that. So this is just, it's good. It doesn't pinch my lashes at all. So many of them I've noticed, I have really almond shaped eyes and a lot of them are for people with round eyes and so they would end up pinching my lashes or like pinching my skin which is so painful. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. But this one works so well. I've never heard anyone say that they didn't like it. I'm sure maybe there's some reviews deep on Sephora or Nordstrom's website that say that it's terrible because there always are. But every time I mention this, people in the comments say that they're so happy they bit the bullet for it. So highly, highly, highly recommend this. This is the only tool I'm recommending this year for a reason. Let's switch gears slightly. I want to talk about this Dermalogica. This is the Age Smart Clearing Serum. I'm almost out of this, which makes me very sad. I just have a little bit left. But this has seriously made such a difference in my skin. So I just take a pump of it at night. It has this little dropper. I take a pump into my fingers and just pat it into my skin. And I really haven't been having a lot of breakouts. My skin was doing pretty well, but I was getting those occasional flare-ups. And like TMI, but I was on my period last week and I didn't break out. Like not a single breakout, which is unheard of for me. I am the person who has had acne from middle school. I'm now 33 and still getting acne. It's like my skin cannot get it together. But I really feel like this has completely helped and I'm going to have to repurchase it now because... I just think that this is like one of the biggest factors that has to do with helping my skin stay clear. I'm just going to go all over the place in this video. Let's talk about the Billy Razor. I discovered this, I want to say in like March or April of 2019. And to be honest with you, I saw so many people talking about it. I thought it was definitely overhyped. And I didn't have an issue necessarily with my previous razor. I just, I don't know, shaved and that was that. <sighs> this is good. These are just, I don't even know what it is about it. It is just so, so good. So it has this little magnetic stand, not stand, but it's like a holder in the shower. So this just sticks right to the shower, which is really, really convenient. And then the um, stuff around it is like a gel and it just gets the closest shave. This thing has five blades, which is amazing. I need to replace my um, cartridge, but not only do I feel like I've gotten the closest shave with this, 
but it's also cheaper than my other razor was. So the cartridges are way cheaper. You pay $9, I think it's for four cartridges. They come straight to your door. You don't have to worry about it and it's cute. I have the blush one, but they have tons of really cute colors. So highly, highly recommend trying this out if you haven't already. For $9, they send you the handle, the little stick thing for your shower and then a couple of cartridges. So if you haven't tried it, try it. I will link it. It is just so good. And I also just never knew that I cared about what razor I used, but turns out I do. And this is the winner. I'm at the point in my life that I wash my hair as little as humanly possible, which means I wash it every like five to six days. And I was getting a lot of product buildup just because I use dry shampoo all the time. I'm constantly putting something in my hair to make myself not have to wash it for like one more day. And I decided to try out this from Bumble and Bumble. This is the Sunday shampoo. This is my second bottle of it. Oh my gosh, what a difference this makes. I was getting to a point that I would wash my hair and then when I was drying it, I could like feel grime in it. I almost just felt like I still had conditioner in it or something like that greasy, like weighed down feeling. Now, after I wash my hair, it actually feels clean. Like I, it's so indescribable, but it feels almost like lightweight and just so clean. If you wash your hair way more than that, like every couple of days, don't use this every day. Only use it like once a week. You, It will like strip your hair if you use it all the time, but I don't wash my hair very often, so this is what I've been using. And then to go along with that, this is actually, whoop, it's wet because it was in my shower, but it's also empty. This is the Bumble and Bumble Thickening Volume Conditioner. And what I will say about this is, I don't think that you're gonna wash your hair with this and all of a sudden have like beyond voluminous hair. But what I will say is this conditions my hair, makes it super easy to brush out, and it doesn't weigh it down. So I feel like it does hold some of my styles better just because it's not super like hydrating or anything like that. It still is nourishing my hair without weighing it down. This Elemis Primer, Oh my gosh, this is expensive, but it is so good. So it is the Pro Collagen Insta Smooth Primer, and this, hopefully you'll be able to see on my hand what it does. So when you put it onto your skin, it really just blurs everything. It gives your skin the most beautiful canvas to apply makeup over. I just, it's amazing. I feel like even with just this on my skin, if I didn't have acne scars or anything, I could totally see myself putting moisturizer on and then just putting this on and being good to go. It smooths everything out so beautifully that it almost looks like that your skin is just poreless, which is mind blowing. So it is expensive, but I definitely love this and I will be repurchasing when I'm done with it. I still have quite a bit, thankfully, but yeah, this is really good. And I do really like the packaging that it's a pump, but it's a squeezy tube. This is some of my favorite packaging. Next up, I have the lip mask from Laneige. This was something I discovered this year and I took a while to pull the trigger on it, but I am so glad I did. It almost just leaves a barrier for your lips so that they can repair themselves overnight. And then when you wake up, your lips feel nice and supple. They don't feel cracked or dry or any of those terrible things that especially the winter do to your lips. This I just feel like locks in moisture, repairs them, and then gives them new life. Can't say enough good things about it. It did come with a little spatula that I used for a approximately like two weeks and then gave up on. Um, I am probably about halfway done with this jar, but oh my gosh, it is amazing. Adam makes me kiss him before I put this on at night because it's pretty thick and he hates the feeling of anything on his lips. Such a guy thing, but it is so thick that it's like automatic. I keep telling him I'm just trying to help him out and nourish his lips too, which he's not into, but this Highly recommend, especially if you do have dry or cracked lips. It would be crazy for me to not share two of my nail polish color favorites with you. I'm actually not wearing either of them right now, which is very unlikely, but this one is in Model Clicks. These are both from the Essie Gel Couture line, and this one is in Matter of Fiction, which I just took off of my nails. I actually wore both of these. This one, then this one, and now I have this one, but I will likely go back to one of these two. These have been my go-to for so long. I wore 
This one, obviously, I don't wear it during the summer, but I wore it all last winter, and I've been wearing it since fall again. And then this color I wear on and off all year long. This was the color of my nails basically all summer. Just love both of these so much. The formula is outstanding, and both of these I just feel like are timeless colors. I have to mention the Stay Naked Concealer from Urban Decay. It's what I have on today. I don't use concealer crazily. I know a lot of people put a ton of it under their eyes, highlight their entire face. I don't do that. I literally only put it right in the corner wherever I have darkness. Sometimes I'll put it under my eyes, but very rarely. I like this one because it does give me that coverage that I want without feeling cakey. It doesn't feel like I'm adding a ton of product onto that area. I don't like to add a bunch of stuff around the eyes because I feel like it gets cakey so quickly. And then you can see all of my fine lines and wrinkles, which I'm trying to avoid those the best that I can. So I try to keep this as clear as human possible so this really just gives me that lightweight but still giving me coverage finish I have two mascaras to share with you I've talked about this one eight bazillion times it is the hourglass caution extreme lash mascara no surprise here I have been layering these two this one is the L'Oreal lash paradise which is a total dupe for the Too Faced better than sex the one thing I will say about the Lash Paradise is it does dry up semi-quickly, um, but both of these are so good. I use the Lash Paradise for my first coat and then the Caution Extreme for my second coat, although I've used both of them alone and I like both of them as well on their own. So the top one is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. The bottom one is the Hourglass Caution Extreme. Can't say enough good things about both of these and honestly, for a long time I was trying a ton of different uh, mascaras, but now I just feel like there's never going to be a mascara that I love more than this Hourglass one. I love this one as well and them paired together is like my perfect combination, but I don't know that there's a reason to ever try another mascara again. I mentioned this in my Best of Beauty for 2018 as well. It has just been a favorite. It's still a favorite. I recommend it. If you don't want to get addicted to a high-end mascara, don't try it because you're going to love it so much and then you're going to want to buy it. That's your forewarning. I have loved the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Liner for a long time. And this year I found kind of on accident the micro tip version which i actually have both so i'll show you the difference but the micro tip i especially love i feel like it really helps me get that like little wing that i want i'm not trying to have a crazy wing but just like a little something and since the brush is so small it makes it so much easier to get in there the difference between these brushes is like crazy crazy so you can see how teeny tiny that micro tip brush is and I just feel like it gives you so much more control so either if you're a beginner this would be good for you because you don't it won't be messed up right away and I feel like with the br the big brush sometimes I will go in and be like oh that's a little bit thicker than I wanted it to be the one downside about the micro tip is you do have to go over a line to kind of build it up more but you get the same amount of product so you're still going to be able to use it for just as long as you would the bigger one you just have a little bit more control and the precision on the wing is just so good so highly highly recommend this I don't know why I stumbled upon this. I think I just accidentally ordered the wrong one and then fell in love with it. It's the time of the show that I have to talk about the thing that I've probably recommended more than anything I've ever recommended in my life. And it is the Fresh Sugar Lip Treatment. I have been using this for years now and there are quite a few colors that I like. The Rosé shade is still one of my favorites. Used it all year, still love it, still recommend it all the things not going to go into it because I literally talk about this like at least once a month on here it's just so good and I can't go a year without talking about it another lip product that I have been just absolutely loving this year is from origins this is the blooming sheer lip balm this is in the shade honey blush it's what I have on my lips today this is actually all I have on today and it's kind of like a lipstick packaging but it is a balm feeling. It gives you just a little bit of color and then also some hydration and shine. I love this because I can just throw it into my bag and go, not worry about it. I don't have to worry about how it's gonna fade or touching it up. Even the more bold versions of it, I have one that the color is called something orchid, I believe, uh, but 
that one as well it's definitely a brighter color but as it fades it's very very natural so i don't have to worry about looking like a crazy person while i'm out this bare minerals bare pro lipstick this is in the shade petal this is just another very very beautiful formula it's a little bit smaller which i like because it's really easy to get the precision in your lips when you're putting it on it's not kind of all over the place and the color is beautiful it is matte but it's so comfortable it doesn't dry down completely to the point that you can't even rub your lips together it still gives your lips that matte look without being dead the new lash eyelash serum is another product i've talked about on multiple multiple occasions but i don't think i've mentioned it in my last couple years of best in beauty because i think i did mostly makeup if i'm not mistaken but this is the eyelash serum i use i'm actually not using it right now i'm kind of giving my lashes a break for a couple of months and then i'm going to go back and start using it again but you just apply it to the top of your lashes and within about six weeks you really see a difference in how long your lashes are it's incredible i just put it on before i go to bed and then probably about after four to five weeks i use it every other night instead of every single night this is a splurge but you can get way more use out of it than they say you can and even after you're feeling like it's basically all gone you can take this rubber stopper out and use the rest of it that's in the tube this is a splurge so i'm all about trying to get as much product out as humanly possible this is my favorite gel pencil type liner from the year and i figured i have quite a few of these but i figured i would share just kind of my favorite color so this is the urban decay 24 7 glide on eye pencil and it's in the shade rockstar which is kind of like an eggplant purpley shade i love this because it's dark but since i have green eyes purple is a really good contrast color to make your eye color pop this is something that I love to smudge under my eyes. There are two main ways that I use this. Either I take the pencil directly and draw above my lash line and then I smudge it out with this teeny tiny brush and just kind of smudge it for a more like lived in look or I will take the pencil and take the brush directly onto the pencil and then smudge it under my lower lash line. So those are kind of the two ways that I like to use it can't recommend it enough they have a bazillion colors of this you can't go wrong and i really like doing a dark color that's not a black because it's not as harsh so if i'm doing that smudgy look i don't want it to look too messy i kept this packaging only for this video because i had to share it with you guys this is the origins drink up intensive overnight hydrating mask with avocado and swiss glacier water it's an overnight mask it smells phenomenal i wish you guys could smell it through the screen Oh yeah, it is so good. Uh, but you just put this on and it instantly makes my skin feel incredibly soft. It's like you put it on and then your skin's like, okay, we're done with texture, we're good. Um, it is just amazing. I can't say enough good things about it. Every single time that I've used this and I wake up, my skin just feels so plump and supple and happy and moisturized but not greasy. It's the perfect amount of moisture for me. I have pretty normal, and then in the summer, my skin's a bit oily, in the winter, it's a bit dry, but for the most part, I have pretty normal skin, and this is a really, really good option for me. And I've said this before, but Origins products are just really good with my skin. I don't know what it is. It's probably certain ingredients that they use in a lot of their products, but their products just really agree with my skin type. So this was no different. I used it up and now i need to grab another one the ColourPop brow boss gel this is such a good colored brow gel i love it because the little brush is pretty small and it adds just a little bit of color to your brows while holding them in place you guys know that i don't go crazy with my brows because i already do have some pretty full brows naturally but this is really good i like the color let's see what color i even have light brown is the color i have some of the colors that they had were just way too warm toned for me but this i feel like is cool enough for my brows that it's so good and it's affordable which is just like the icing on top last but not least is from dry bar this is the triple sec it's the three in one textures amplifies and refreshes i love this spray so much i usually use it on like 
three to four day hair which I know sounds gross but it smells really really good it kind of soaks up the moisture but then also gives your hair some new life depending on what I'm doing sometimes I'll use it on second day hair but I just I have very naturally straight and fine hair so I don't have a lot of volume at all and I have pretty much zero texture so this is really really helpful especially if I want to do a braid or something a lot of times I'll do like a sweeping braid down the side of my hair or something and if I do anything like that I'll usually spray this in there first it just gives me a little bit more of like the PC look and helps my hair and style last for way longer than I would be able to between washes whoo all righty guys that was so many products but that was my best in beauty for 2019 I hope that you enjoyed it let me know down below what your favorite products from 2019 were. I would love to know what you were loving for the year. I will link everything that I mentioned down below in the bottom bar. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys.